Greetings. Here's the latest addition to the herd of pinballs. Picked this up a while ago. It's an Agents 777 made by Game Plan in 1984. You're of course looking at the back glass here. I picked this up uh, and there wasn't even an attempt made to tell me that it works or it's good or this or that. It was part of a package deal the seller got and he had no interest in dealing with it. So I ended up with it. As the seller puts it, he sold it to me at a loss. Boo-hoo. Anyway, so here's the uh, back box that the glass fits in and a pristine example of one of the legs that came with it even though it may seem like it's rusted what they did was they painted these legs with uh, wood grain paint and uh, that will obviously need to be stripped the other legs look the same but they're still in the garage we got a bucket of bolts and stuff with it Two circuit boards that don't look too bad that we're going to have uh, an in-depth look at. And the way this looked, if I open the back box, basically everything in here, the boards were just, these two boards you see are still mounted. The other boards that were laying on top of the back box were just thrown in here and partially held in place by the uh, wiring harness. That big empty spot in the middle is where the transformer goes, which was fortunately included. And that is over here. That'll be the first thing that will get fixed. Here is the machine itself. As you can see, it does have moderate playfield wear, which will need to get addressed. Cabinet's not too bad, but there are a lot of chips in it. And so, yeah, this is a bit of a bigger project. It's going to take me a while. I will probably not deal with the artwork till the very end when I'm sure that this machine runs and plays. And I'll need outside help to do that because I'm not a very good artist. One of the big advantages of the machine, though, was see that NICAD battery sitting right there? I found that in the bottom of the playfield. That is normally mounted on the CPU board just about, where is it, here, this hole and this hole, and since that's the top one mounted, if the battery started leaking, it will go all over the electronics. And most uh, game plan games have that malady and they're very, very difficult to fix. And even if you think you neutralized all of the battery, uh, the, the, the battery leakage and everything's fine and you fixed all the traces, there's stuff that'll go under the chips, there's stuff that'll travel inside the chips. And the minute you apply power to it, it'll start eating away and the machine will die on you again. So that was, I was on the fence whether to buy this, but when I saw that the battery had been removed previously, I figured it can't be that bad, right? I started to work on these boards a little bit, but uh, I will walk you through because every single, there are four PCBs in the back box and of course the transformer we will test and fix all of them as required and then power up the machine of course I gotta clean up the legs and this machine doesn't have gas plasma displays but regular LED displays seven digit so that should be a little bit easier to deal with or in case of failure uh, easier to repair and find parts for so let's jump into it. So I bolted together all of the pieces of the machine, makes it a lot easier to work on. And uh, there she is, including the beautiful legs. Uh, 
that I can and will do something about, but not just yet. The uh, cabinet is structurally sound. The back box is structurally sound. I could put it on without anything collapsing. The other thing I did was uh, remember, if you remember what the inside of the back box looked like, I basically cleaned up a bit, hooked up uh, the wire looms coming from the play field to the back box, put all of the mounting hardware back in so the boards are properly attached. They were all mounted using locking uh, plastic standoffs which had all grown brittle and broke. That's why everything was hanging askew. But it looks like everything's there. There's the power supply, the uh, MPU board, sound board, solenoid driver, and lamp driver. And so now the fun begins and we are going to start We'll take out the uh, power supply and test it on the bench. Here's a transformer assembly and some power regulation and distribution over here. Uh, we got a massive transformer here. It's all linear, of course. Uh, three bridges over here. There's only this cap on here and that regulates or that supplies the unregulated uh, 12 volts which which the 5 volt logic supply is derived from. We also have a uh, 6.3 volts AC over here for the uh, general illumination. Those are the lights that come on the minute you power this guy up. We have 24 volts DC which is uh, to drive solenoids we got uh, plus 7 volts for controlled lamps, which are the computer blinks them on and off. We got 12 volts unregulated here. And this is the AC fuse, which they dangerously put in the same row as all the other fuses. It makes sense manufacturing wise, but it doesn't make sense safety wise. But it is what it is. The game plugs into these guys, and we got uh, some limiting resistors over here, and that's about it. So when I tested this guy, it was mostly good. What wasn't good was the 5 volts, which you can see the back side over here. No, you can't. There you go. So basically this taps the 12 volts unregulated and makes uh, 5 volts at 3 amps. And uh, this whole thing acts as a heat sink. But what we had was, it was, uh, the other voltages were good. This voltage was showing about 1.8 volts, which isn't nearly enough to power up anything. It was pretty simple. The uh, old regulator had gone bad. I swapped this out and I got 5 volts coming out of it now. And I should probably recheck that now before putting this guy back into the machine and actually hooking boards to it. I originally brought this power supply up slowly with a Variac uh, looking for smoke explosions or any other untoward things and nothing happened. Should always do that on an unknown power supply. Bring it up slowly. But uh, I replaced uh, the regulator so let's see if it does its job. So uh, let's see what's going in. That's the unregulated 12 volts. And what's coming out? 4.990 volts. Doesn't get much better than this. So it's time to put this thing 
into the machine and start to do some testing, careful testing. Transformers back in. For the test, all I have plugged in is the play field and the back box. So all we're going to test for is does the 6.3 volts AC light up some bulbs for us. Now one other thing I saw is one of the connectors has lost a bunch of wires there. They're broken off. That is the uh, CPU board so that needs to be fixed and the power switch is acting up. But I can't contain my excitement. Let's see if at least we'll get, we get a few bulbs to light up. Here we go. We got the back box lit up. This is the general illumination. Doesn't need a CPU. And we got the play field lit up too. It's kind of hard to see. Let me switch angles here but yeah you can see there's bulbs on the uh, play field that are lit up behind the flipper there just the general illumination so that's step one next let's put a new power switch in here and then go on to the CPU board so here's a bunch of AC related stuff I worked on <clears throat> needs a little bit of explanation. This was the original power cord where somebody conveniently snipped off the ground lug. So we're in a venue, there's no uh, grounded outlet, so we'll just snip off the ground lug, which is totally unsafe. And also, have you ever heard of these? They will convert a grounded wire to a non-grounded wire with an extra eyelet here that you can connect to ground, which is the proper way to do it. Not only do you get ground, but you don't disfigure the plug either, but of course, no, we had to just cut that off because we had no time. That is unsafe. <coughs> and of course, there on top is the new plug grounded so we're all safe. Here's the power switch I removed and it's interesting because this is just a simple on off switch or supposed to be but it moves in all directions. It moves left right up down sometimes it connects so it moves in four directions. I don't think that was intended. Something in there is broken. And not all positions yield power. So that was replaced and should be working great now. And speaking of safety, uh, I haven't given you my standard disclaimer that a lot of other people are using too, but uh, this is for entertainment purposes. You don't really want to be running AC cords on your bench connected by alligator clips. If mishandled, it can cause you pain. I have the scars to, to show for it. So don't do it. This is entertainment. Sit back, laugh at the subject matter or me, but don't do it the same way I do it. Or don't do it at all. So after fixing the AC issues, I got rid of one of the more annoying things and those were those rust looking uh, wood grain painted legs that I uh, cleaned up a bit and sprayed. It looks a lot nicer. So then I uh, tried out the machine and I didn't get any love. The boards, like on Bally boards, have single LEDs that blink a certain amount of time times to let you know the health of the board. And uh, neither of the boards, well, the uh, CPU board there, 
and the soundboard blinked at all and nothing really happened and then I was thrown another curveball I'm in the other room and uh, I smell smoke so uh, I came back in here I saw thick smoke coming out of the back box here and what it was was this is the power supply I fixed but uh, one of the uh, capacitors, there were two tantalum capacitors, one on the input of the 5 volt regulator and one on the output. The input one had self-destructed. And I didn't know that such a small component would re release that much magic smoke, but it did. So it looked a lot more serious in the beginning than it was. I replaced the caps with just regular... Uh, electrolytics and uh, the power supply came back up again and this didn't have a fuse on the 5 volt line coming out of it so uh, I added a fuse over there but uh, even with all that done no love so we're gonna have to pull the boards and try to figure out what ails them I'm going to end this segment now because the board work's going to take a while. And I haven't had that much time to spend on this machine. But next time we'll have a look and see if we can get the boards up and running. And see if we can get this machine to finally work. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment and share. And we'll see you in part two.